everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Ladies in Red. Um, today is a episode all about navigating the pandemic, and we have a guest, um, Kim Macemore, who is the head women's lacrosse coach that we'll talk to a little later on. But um, we're really excited. This episode, we are going to kind of talk about personal experiences and things that we've seen in um, the sports industry of the responses and effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. And we'll also be talking about um, with Coach Mace Moore, what her athletes have been doing um, to continue their training, stay connected to their other teammates, um, and just keep mental focus given the uncertain circumstances that we have about the spring season. Definitely, yeah. And just touching like what Phoebe said on like previous pandemics and how it, they have affected um, the sports industry as well, um, especially in 1919 with the Spanish flu and even after um, both world wars, just a little history on how people respond to pandemics and in the sports industry and after they happen. But first, let's do some updates of women in sports. Um, today, the day we are recording is February 3rd, which is the 35th annual National Girls and Women in Sports Day. Um, so if you're watching or listening, that was last week. Um, and this day basically was created to recognize and celebrate girls and women, their participation in sports, and also advocate and promote equality in the sports industry. So um, there are a ton of different things, events happening um, nationwide uh with various organizations including our very own Dickinson um so hopefully you guys got to see that and another update is that the International Olympic Committee um announced full gender equality and athlete participation for the next Olympics um this was decided I believe within the past two-ish months but um the committee also approved the motion that there was a minimum of 30 percent female representation in the executive committee. Um, so that is obviously the higher up. And although it does seem like a low number, 30%, um, it is a good um, stride and a good thing that they have required a minimum. That way it can't ever go down. It'll only go up from here. Definitely. And I think it's very empowering to see women in executive positions like that. I know we've talked about that a lot, but especially at the Olympics, the largest sports competition in the world. Um, I think it's super important that committees like the European Olympic Committee should ensure that these are standards that are met, kind of like Title IX is in, so women aren't gypped in the sports industry and aren't cut short of opportunities. Why cut your portions down? If you're hungry and you want something that's both filling and delicious, well, at Spoon's Cafe, they believe in cutting the chemicals, not the portions. Located at 57 West Pomfret Street, right near downtown Carlisle, Spoon's offers great sandwiches, salads, or soups, and they are not just good, but good for you. And they will fill you right up. Stop cutting down on the size of your lunch instead and get a delicious filling lunch today at Spoon's Cafe. Open six days a week, Monday through Fridays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturdays, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Spoon's is the perfect spot to enjoy a great tasting lunch today. All right, everybody, we're uh, featuring our new guest this week, Kim Macemore. Um, Kim is the head women's lacrosse coach here at Dickinson. Um, this spring will be her eighth season here, and she is also the faculty member that represents the Harris Society. So yeah, welcome, Kim. Thank you. Happy to be here. Big fans of your guys'. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. We are so excited. Um, so we'll just start off off the bat. Um, today's theme is kind of navigating the pandemic and stuff. So um, from a coaching standpoint and just your experience with your team, how has your team been doing staying fit and motivated for during all of these troubled times? Yeah, I mean, I think one of my favorite things about my team is that they're really resilient. So certainly it's ebbed and flowed as it has for everybody um, individually and I'm sure as teams. Um, but I think, you know, we have tremendous leadership and I think that helps. Um, keep people motivated. Uh, we recently introduced some, you know, as you guys know, we're living in these pods. So we have these pod challenges and um, we release a different grid every week. And so each pod can earn points by completing different activities within the grid. Um, and so the, 
the activities range from like cardio, strength conditioning, um, lacrosse skill, obviously, but we wanted to broaden it a little bit more and make sure we were focusing on like community building and engagement within the pods and across the pods. Um, we also have like a self-care column and um, a be better column. That's really interesting. That's a cool way to like keep players involved and stuff. Um, and it's fun too. Um, it doesn't seem like it would be like annoying to do in a way where it's like, oh, I have to do this. It sounds like it'd be something that would be like fun to keep doing. But. Yeah. And like they pick and choose what they want to do. Like they don't have to do everything. Um, but the more they do, the more points they earn. And then our leadership kind of comes together at the end of the week and determine a winner. And they have like a private Instagram and all kinds of stuff that I don't really know much about, but it seems to be really keeping them invested. Um, and then we have like challenge opportunities too. So like everybody, we've had to become a little bit adaptable. Yeah, definitely. It seems like that's a cool way too to like stay connected um, because you're not just like, it's not just the player reporting to the coach or doing things like that. It's very uh, community oriented, like you mentioned. And like, it really just keeps everyone in contact with each other and motivate each other and we all know that the power of uh, having a teammate motivate you. So that's definitely really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I like how you said there's like a column for mental health. And I think that's super important, especially um, in athletes during this time as well. Uh, super important, especially living in pods, you know, um, how do you think your team will stay connected as a whole, even if they are living separately in pods this semester? Um, well, hopefully practice will help that once we have the opportunity to start doing that. Um, just being together, I think, you know, it was kind of a luxury that we had taken for granted before. Um, so I think we're just going to be so happy to be together. Definitely. Yeah, that's super interesting. Um, and just kind of like going off of that, do you see somewhat of a common way to respond to the pandemic in, rego in regards to sports and teams just in general at the college level? Um, and then like, how do you think our conference is responding to the pandemic? Yeah, um, I think there's no right way to handle this. There's no win-win situation or solution to this. Um, and I think that's kind of been hard for people to grasp. Like so many people have said, well, like these people can do it and those people are doing it successfully. And my perspective is the people that are doing it successfully have money and resources or it appears that they're doing it successfully because they're not testing at the level that other people are. You know, like we have a really robust testing protocol and I think that's gonna set us up to do well this semester. Um, I think the Centennial's done an amazing job. We have ex excellent leadership in Portia Hoig and her team. Um, I, you know, I'm fortunate to be our senior woman administrator. So I've been part of administrative delegate meetings pretty much every other week for the past few months. And just listening to them, um, their compassion for our student athletes and for giving them a fighting chance, given the circumstances. Um, obviously, they are prioritizing health and safety, but they are doing everything in their power to give us the opportunity to, to play. I think that's interesting that like you bring up the um, bigger schools and like the financial side of it, because I definitely agree with that. Like you see like college football, like the Alabamas, the Clemsons, like they like had probably had to play because those big sports are what are bringing in like a lot of money for the school just in general, where it's a little bit different for us because we're obviously not like those big powerhouse um, athletic schools. So yeah, I think that's a really interesting point. Yeah, absolutely. Like those are revenue producing sports for mm -hmm. the institution. Um, Division three is great, but but we're not bringing in money for the college. Nobody's paying ticket sales to come to our games, right? So I feel fortunate to be a Division three coach right now because I don't feel like people are putting my health and safety at risk to bring in some money to the college. You know, we are fortunate that our president and our institution has prioritized health and safety from the beginning, and we're, we're able to do that. You know, mm -hmm. so I know that whatever decision comes our way, it's with our health and safety safety at the forefront. Yeah, I think it's interesting too the differences between um, like a state institution or a private institution. Um, just from my experience, my younger sister plays field hockey at Chippensburg. So literally our neighbors down the road. Yeah. And she was fortunate enough to be back on campus. Um, and she did do some sort of playing in the fall and is going back in the spring um, in a few weeks. So I think it's interesting that like the different perspectives, like you were saying that the division three kind of has 
they have less um, pressure because of the income coming in, but then we have the privilege of having like the private institutions and then being able to make certain decisions kind of specific for our place. Whereas Schippensburg, for example, was like a state institution, so state funded or things like that. So they kind of abide by more broader rules, mm -hmm. I guess, or more things. Whereas Dickinson, I think is really proving that they are doing a unique, like specified response to it rather than um, kind of like a broad general one. Um, not saying that either one is wrong or mm -hmm. um, there's a right way, like you said, there's no right way to battle it, but it is interesting to look at the differences, especially between Dickinson and Ship because Ship is right down the road. Right. Um, so and that's just something I've seen from the other side of it because of my sister. So right. very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think obviously there is a balance between prior prioritizing health and safety and playing and everything. And I think that's obviously going to be super important in the next coming months. How do you think your team will be successful this season, especially after such a heartbreaking end to it in March of 2020? Yeah, it's hard to believe that that was almost a year ago. You know, I think um, so many teams were spring sport teams were put in a crazy situation where they didn't necessarily have closure. So I do appreciate the fact that like we were on spring break in Florida together, warm weather, like right on the beach, having a great time. And we knew like this could be it, you know? And so we had those moments together and we got some great closure and it was, it was amongst all the craziness. It was a really nice time to be together. Um, so I think, you know, if anything, you, you all probably have experienced just new perspective and, and prioritizing and, you know, playing like it's your last game, like coaches will say that to you all the time. And you're like, yeah, you know, but like now we've all experienced it and it's not an injury that could end our season or our career. Like it was a pandemic for some people that ended their careers, you know? So I think um, we're not taking it for granted. So success for me is our team handling whatever comes at us, you know, whether we get the opportunity to compete or not, handling it with grace, rolling with the punches, enjoying what we're doing together and just being thankful for any opportunity that we get. Um, and I wanna come out of this a stronger team and a more unified team. I think that's what success would be for us. Yeah, and I think it's just so yeah, important to... Like Go ahead, Chris. <laughs> Oh no, it's fine. I was just going to say like I can connect to that from just from being in Arizona for last um, spring break and like the same thing like you said like the team surrounding us just started getting calls from their athletic directors like saying you guys need to take the next flight home whatever and I think that's when it started to click for us that like oh like this could be the end of our season and especially like for our seniors and stuff like that and I also think that almost makes us more hungry to have a season this spring just because we missed last year already so yeah you missed last year and you were coming off a conference championship like that's crazy mm -hmm. you know yeah. yeah yeah and I think the point of like not taking anything for granted is like a super super good lesson to take out of all this um among plenty others but um right. just for me because I was unable to have my senior season so I missed that closer as well um not knowing that my junior year was going to be the last time I was playing. Um, it's kind of crazy to think about, but now with almost everything that I do, I very much try not to take anything for granted and really focus on the little things and appreciate it. And kind of, um, it's really hard to find that acceptance. I can't, I'm not going to say I found that yet. Um, not being able to play a senior season. I still am very optimistic that I'll get to be on the field again um, in the spring, even if it's for a, team scrimmage or something um I would love to just get back out there one last time to know that um to kind of savor that moment of it being the last time if that makes sense <laughs> totally yeah yeah I think it's really important uh, right now just staying hungry and especially in the off season staying hungry and staying connected so has have there been any positives that your team has experienced during the remote semester apart or just during this time since last March yeah a lot of silver linings. And I think we've been intentional about looking for those silver linings, which has helped us cope with, you know, the uncertainty, um, you know, early on in the pandemic. So probably last spring while we were still in season, you know, we, um, we developed a leadership development Institute. So instead of just working with captains or like senior leaders on the team, um, 
we completed a process um, where we we had underclassmen kind of solicit nominations to be part of this leadership development because I think you guys all know leadership means everything. You could have the most talented team in the world, but if you're not led well, you're not going to be successful, whatever success means for you, right? And so we thought it would be a good opportunity to spend a lot of time developing our leadership in the younger years so that it would benefit us in the long run. So we developed this really great committee. We met weekly um, and through them, we reevaluated our core values. Um, and so we came up with four new core values, um, balance, belonging, growth, and humility. And I think like the more I think about it, it's just so fitting for this time, you know? Um, so that was one really big positive that was kind of over the long haul. Um, certainly like, them having the opportunity to not be on campus, but still be together. We were fortunate that most of our, our classes kind of split up and went to different locations um, for the fall semester. So our entire freshman class was in Bethany Beach, Delaware for two months. Like they don't know each other. They signed on, it was like real world. They're living together, getting to know each other. Um, and like the bonding that occurred there, we couldn't have replicated that had we been on campus. You know, so that is huge. And for our freshman class to be that connected coming into a spring season, their first um, out of college. Um, and, you know, we had juniors and seniors kind of doing the same thing in other locations. Um, so certainly a lot of positives. Um, and I think, you know, big picture, they've been doing some soul searching and kind of figuring out, okay, what is important to me? You know, like time isn't guaranteed. So like, I'm gonna spend time and energy on things that I really care about and I'm really passionate about. Um, so I think it's forced us to really evaluate how we spend our time and, and who we interact with and you know what, what we do to become better people. Yeah, that is, couldn't have said it better myself. I find myself also um, with this time, I did a lot of soul searching and a lot of kind of um, coming to realizations and my, my New Year's resolution this year was to be more intentional with my time to not just spend it doing aimless things to um, to be intentional with it and have a purpose behind that. So I think it's a really good thing um, that I've taken out of everything as well, because as we all have experienced um, in the past year, it's been, it's been tough, um, but we've been able to do that. And the leadership um, that you were talking about is very similar to what we do for field hockey. Um, and I think, Sid, you can attest to this too, that I think it is really really cool way to have leadership on a team because it does also um, emphasize the longevity. Like we have leaders on our team that if they are underclassmen then they have that experience and they can bring that on. I know we've really been focusing on that, especially um, right now, like I am a senior on, we call it the leadership council, but we are kind of handing it off to the next year, even though we're still there, we're kind of like letting the juniors and sophomores take a little bit more lead because it's going to be their team eventually. They're going to be the big dogs um, in the next coming years. So I think it's something really cool that I've seen many teams moving towards that. And I think it's been really successful. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I agree. And I think it's very telling when you have like a younger underclassman on leadership council or leadership development, because they know so much more than what the seniors know about what's going on in the junior class. And especially with all these things with pods or whatever, like things might be split up and everything. And I think it'll definitely make any team who does it very successful um, in leadership. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we uh, hit all of the great points that we had for you today. We appreciate you for coming on. Um, love to hear everything that you were talking about and um, we're just going to keep staying optimistic and everything for the spring, hoping to see uh, your team out in the field. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Thanks for your time, guys. Really have loved watching your show and think it's great that you are amplifying women and women at Dickinson and nationally. Um, so keep up the good work. Thank, Thank you. you. We appreciate Thank that. You. That's awesome. Thanks so Thank much. You. All right. What a great conversation that um, we just had with Coach Mace Moore. That was really interesting to kind of hear about what her team's doing and um, just in general, the response to the COVID-19 pandemic. So now we're just going to um, migrate right over to what ourselves and other athletes are doing to navigate the pandemic as well. Um, so one 
positive thing that um, came out of the pandemic was the attention that women's sports um, got due to the lack of various competitions. So as we all know, a lot of sports were um, put on hold or were unable to play and stuff due to the pandemic. However, during the summer, the National Women's Soccer League had their Challenge Cup, which was an 18 tournament and it took place in a bubble. So they were all quarantined and um, following regulations and guidelines and stuff to be safe. Um, but this was one of the first sporting events in the world to be held since the start of the pandemic. So a lot of people were kind of going through sports withdrawal and were really excited to just watch competition again, um, which directly caused these um, women and this league to get uh, a lot of new audience. Um, it actually broke a record for them. Um, previously, before the pandemic, their record of viewing viewers was 190,000 viewers um, for a previous, um, I believe it was a championship game in 2014. And this year, uh, or last year, 2020, they hit a record of 653,000 viewers on CBS. Um, and that broke the record just a week after the um, their previous records. So they broke two records. The first one was 572,000 for the opening match. And then they beat that with the final championship at 653,000. So as anybody can see, that is a clear jump in viewers. That is like six, seven times the amount they normally get. Um, so it's really cool to see that a lot of people were watching, not only watching, but most likely are going to be watching again um, because they are invested now as most of us would be. So this is definitely um, a positive that came out of it because it just drew, drew more attention for these um, women in sports. And it's really cool that that many people were tuning in and seeing what these women do. Yeah, and also just like, I don't know, throughout this past pandemic, this past year with the pandemic, um, fans haven't been able to physically go to stadiums. So they've had to find ways to like live in this sports world without going to games. And some people like invest so much time and money with like season tickets, like stuff like that. And they weren't able to do so this past year. So I think a lot of like fans had to find ways to navigate the sports world and be able to watch it and still support their favorite teams and athletes um, for a long period of time. Um, and obviously this was a successful way to do so because the viewership on like television channels and stuff like that improved and increased greatly, so. Yeah, I think um, one big thing that sports does is just, even without a pandemic, it just builds a sense of community and a sense of belonging, especially in America. Professional sports are just very prominent and the sport that you're a fan of, you feel like you belong to that city or that team. And I think during a pandemic like this, it's really awesome to see silver linings. Like we were talking with Coach Mace Moore, silver linings such as women's teams being more recognized and more viewers being viewed like Phoebe said those things will stick along and people will become more invested in women's sports and competitions as well yeah exactly and as we all know um being familiar with sports and like Kristen said it brings a sense of community so being able to for example with these women um in the national soccer team they were finally able to everyone was all tuning into one game, watching something. Um, and then when sports were able to come back um, in recent months due to following guidelines and bubbles and stuff, it really you could tell that everybody was really excited about it. And it almost brought back, and like we talked about earlier too, like taking things for granted, like from now on, everybody's, nobody's gonna take it for granted getting to go to a game, getting to even watch a game because we went through a period of time where we were unable to do those things. So. Um, a lot of times it takes that um, inability to then bring out that it's something really special. Yeah, definitely. And like this past season has definitely been like, like with you, Phoebe, like your last season, your senior season was cut short. Um, and so like not a lot of people move on to play professional sports as well. So it's just affecting that much broader of um, athletes too around the world. Um, so yeah, I think it's interesting to like find new ways to support teams and kind of like stay involved, um, in your sport, even after college, stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's really telling that, um, the world really depends a lot on sports for a lot of different aspects of life. Um, 
obviously us growing up in sports, we kind of all knew that um, with our respective sports and experience, but as the general public also watching professional sports and college sports and various things that it is just such a big pillar of um, definitely our nation um, in America, but also in the world. And mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to move on to the next topic. Should I just do that? Like, from yeah. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to segue. I was, yeah, <laughs> I'm just going to be like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. And from a fan perspective, what we were just talking about America during this pandemic has had to learn to live without professional sports and feeling that sense of community and belonging. And I know a lot of um, like broadcasting channels and sports channels have tried to still try to create that sense of belonging and in may 2020 espn um began airing the last dance which was a documentary series about michael jordan and his 97 to 98 season with the chicago bulls and also just detailing his journey from his high school career to his um current position in sports and i think um this is super awesome for people to view because it's just you see someone like michael jordan you want to know everything about him because he's just someone to look up to and just really inspiring and i think it's awesome for ESPN to air things like these to give, just give people hope about a future and about things to look forward to after this pandemic is over in the sports industry. Yeah, and in a way it sort of gives like almost a sense of hope to the audience um, because like, as we mentioned earlier in the introduction, just like looking at other historical pandemics such as like the Spanish flu um, took place during another major sports era which was like 1918 to 1919. Um, and obviously sports were really different during that time. Like more people are involved, um, both on the sidelines and in the game, um, this generation, but, um, there were even less playing opportunities for women back then, obviously. Um, and then just again, with like the world wars that said, I think you mentioned earlier, um, there was talk of canceling sports altogether during those, but president Jackson, I believe it was said that there that sports were necessary um, to keep those fighting for their country and like putting their lives on the line to keep them entertained and lift their spirits during like a dark time um, as they're making sacrifices for our country. And I just think that goes to show like we talked about how sports just have a different contribution to individual lives, not necessarily just like competing on the field, but outside of competitions as well. It's just like a, a whole mental side of it as well. Yeah, and if anything, that also just proves the point of the sense of community and the sense of just like the joy that people get from watching sports. Like, um, I know that I know plenty of people that were watching. They, I know ESPN was playing um, just like old games and stuff during the pandemic because there wasn't really any new games happening. But people were still tuning in because they were watching their favorite game or their favorite play um, of the game and stuff like that. That sports really do add um, that sense of kind of. I guess happiness. Um, a lot of people just very much enjoy it. Um, and like Kristen said, you don't have to be playing the sport to like it. There's so many different aspects of the sports industry. Um, and majority obviously actually is like people watching it. So it's these documentaries like The Last Dance and various things um, kind of were giving people their sports fix, I feel like, and hopefully brightening spirits when they were down um, in these tough times, because as we all know, it was quite rough and um it was something cool I remember when it came out um it was really really cool because not many people have known like the story in detail about uh, Michael Jordan and stuff like that and who doesn't want to learn more about someone who is super successful super talented something like that so I'm a big fan of documentaries uh so I definitely enjoyed it yeah I think during this pandemic too it's obviously in the beginning it was even more scary because everything was so unknown and you just wanted to know more about it. and I think celebrities can use their platform to instill hope and peace a little bit and be kind of relatable and I know um Boston was the epicenter for the Spanish flu outbreak and I think I remember Babe Ruth who at the time was a member of the Red Sox got the Spanish flu and we've seen in recent times too a lot of athletes coming out like saying they have COVID-19 and just kind of making it just kind of making it such a less scary time and trying to instill I don't know the word like okayness in society and using their sports platforms as a way for people to connect to them um, rather than people continue to be super scared about the pandemic too. Absolutely. I think it's giving a sense of um, normalcy or a sense of um, 
I'm trying to find the word, right words as well, but um, it is very similar. Like we saw celebrities and um, athletes in our pandemic, similar to Babe Ruth in that pandemic that have kind of announced it and has said that they were following all those safety precautions. That's how scary this virus is, that like it honestly is so contagious and like you can get it literally anywhere. Um, so, and then on the flip side of that, the athletes are promoting safe, safety and things you should do and stuff like that. Like they're all wearing their masks. We see photos of them, we see videos. We see them when they're at their games and they're on the sidelines, they're wearing the mask, they're falling, whatever guideline is in place. Um, so I think it kind of just definitely is something that we've seen in history and now we're seeing again, um, just how sports have brought people some peace and sports are something people look to, to kind of feel connected again, feel better again. Yeah, and I think just like kind of going off the normalcy aspect of it, um, I think I agree that like the athletes coming out and saying that they have COVID and stuff almost makes it like you guys said, less scary. Um, and also during the pandemic or like commercials from what, like, I think Nike had one, um, where they would say like, it's okay. Like we're, we'll get through this together. Like we'll be back on the field in no time. Kind of just giving that sense of hope, um, to again, fans and athletes. Yeah. And yeah, we've seen a lot too. Just obviously in the very beginning of COVID, everything was shut down, quarantine, and still people are still reluctant to go to training centers and gyms. Um, just to protect themselves, their teammates and their coaches. And I think, I mean, I know personally, like it's been hard for me to train and get the motivation because we have been remote and at home and um, away from your teammates. And I think it's hard, but I think one way of being successful in training at home is just like knowing you're not alone and knowing that you have a ton of other athletes and teammates who are doing the exact same thing as you and are working just as hard. And it's almost like you're competing with yourself um, during this pandemic without going to like the gym, but finding other ways to stay, keep training and stay in shape and get ready for what's coming next, which I know my coach always says, like, there will be a day when we step back on the field and we're able to play like that day is coming. You just have to like, there is a light at the end of the tunnel and you just have to keep looking for it and keep pushing through it. And I think it obviously has been like a huge mental game as well but I think it's super important I think a lot of people will come out of this so much mentally stronger and like we were talking about with Kim just so much more grateful to step on the field every day even if it is for like a 7 a.m practice like I know for me I'm gonna like before I would always complain about having to wake up early in the morning but now just being able to step on the field and play like you know it, it could be like the last day that you play so I think it's super important I think that's one of the silver linings of this pandemic yeah I mean, I personally have not been to, I've not stepped foot in a gym in over a year, probably because of the pandemic. I just haven't felt comfortable going to my local gym um, or anything. And I've, like you said, spent a lot of time training on my own, um, whether that be running or lifting in my garage or doing um, a Peloton spin class in my garage as well. Um, it definitely was hard at times to stay motivated and everything, but then you saw people that you know, I know my teammates are really supportive and also people in the media and sports in general, um, the sports industry of everyone was doing it. It was a sense of, yes, it, you feel like you're alone, but at the same time, everybody's doing it because we're all in this together because it literally is affecting every single person. Um, and I know I saw a um, interview on the news um, with Simone Biles, I believe it was, and she was talking about how she was still training for the Olympics, but literally like in her household, like, so like, her trainer was giving her like at home workouts per se during like the thick of it um, when she wasn't able to leave the house and she was on lockdown. So I remember for me seeing that, I was like, oh my gosh, this Olympian's literally doing these exercises in her living room. Like that's what I'm doing. And that was something cool that like I could relate to that. And it showed that people that are at the highest level are dealing with the same things that I am as well. And I'm sure you girls were doing as well. Yeah, and just like, going off of that I'm sure like obviously you guys can relate to it with like a spring your spring season but um my mom has been talking to me a lot about this and she's like oh well you better make sure you're back in you're in shape in case you go back to campus and you have like a season or whatever and I definitely do think it's hard to like be away from a sport for this amount of time and having to like mentally keep yourself in it even though you don't know like when that necessarily could be but yeah, it's just nice to have like that support system where you can have someone be like, all right, like, come on, like, let's go. We're going for a run outside or like we're doing this like at home workout. Um, 
So I think, yeah, that's especially challenging. And I feel like I've noticed on like social media platforms, like Instagram, I know it's shown up on like my TikTok and stuff like that, where a lot of people are starting to get involved in like the fitness world and like kind of pushing other people to like join along with them. They're like, oh, like, look at my, this is my X amount of time transformation. Like this is what I did. And it like kind of is almost there to push people to become more involved on that side of it, I think um yeah definitely a challenge yeah I think like I know I saw on one of my TikTok for you pages one day it was a TikTok and it was like in like it was someone talking they were like in my past like 20 years I always said oh well if I had the time to do this like Mm -hmm. I would do this like it's like oh if I had all the time in the world it's like well you just had all the time in the world like why didn't you do it so I think like that kind when I saw that that kind of just stuck with me that like even though we're, I'm about to go back to school, like I still have all this time in the world where I'm just at home and it's like the perfect opportunity to focus on myself and like train and like be better for my teammates and be better for the name of the school I wear on the front of my jersey. I think it's just super important that you make the most of your time. Yeah, and that's like very similar to how I was talking about my New Year's resolution, like being intentional with time. And that's what I found throughout the pandemic that when we were in lockdown, like you said, we had all the time in the world. And I think we're seeing that um, a lot through social media of people that utilize that time and for the better. Um, I know I worked on myself mentally and physically. I worked more on like running, um, working on my long distance and stuff like that, coming out of an injury. So um, I definitely think that I possibly could have used my time a little bit better, um, but I definitely tried to utilize that and did a lot of at home workouts. Um, YouTube was super helpful, definitely for me. Um, but it is something that I've seen all throughout the social media um, is people doing whether it's the at home workouts. I think I saw one, it was kind of funny. It was like using only home items because they legitimately like didn't have, which not everyone has like weights and bands. Like I, we're lucky if we have that. Um, I'm lucky that my dad is like really into fitness. He has a lot of stuff, but this was literally a guy who's using like soup cans, like literally yeah. doing like bicep curls with soup, soup cans and then like a laundry basket of laundry, like up and down the stairs, which like, it, if you think about it, it does kind of um, correlate. So like if we were to use weights, um, so it was just funny that it was literally, they were, they were utilizing their time and their resources to the best that they could. Um, so, and obviously it was a little laugh in it as well. Always good to say. Yeah, and definitely, I feel like people also use like, working out, um, like going for a run, going for a walk, lifting, whatever you do, and um, sports, like playing competition, even just practice as like an outlet to escape anything else. Like, I know whenever we would get to practice, like our coaches would be like, okay, like forget what happened in the classroom, like forget what's going on outside of that. Like, you're just like here to like, yeah, have fun, but also just like play and like be with your team and stuff like that. So I think that's also a major challenge that people have faced during this pandemic um, as athletes, just like making sure you maintain that, that outlet. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Like what Phoebe was saying with when she um, said about the person using just like household, household items, I think someone using like their platform, like if it was on TikTok or Instagram or whatever is super important because it kind of just like to me, it like makes me feel bad about like the days that I didn't work out. Cause I was like, oh, well there's a pandemic going on. Like I shouldn't, I don't have to work out, but like, really it's just like no excuses. Like mm-hmm. you can do it. And like a lot of these professional athletes are doing it and they are um, just pushing through, like, like Kim said, rolling with the punches and dealing mm-hmm. with this pandemic the best that they can and using yeah. it as an opportunity rather than an inconvenience. Absolutely. And if anything, I think that's, such a great thing to take out of the whole situation and to continue on with because we're still facing it we are still in the pandemic we are still dealing with um a lot of obstacles so it's definitely something to take away from the bulk of it that we've dealt with and find the positives to continue moving on um but we got a little bit into um the social media and stuff so i'm excited to talk about that maybe next week um we're gonna have another episode on next monday so we hope you guys tune into that as well and as always thanks for listening